How did you come up with the concept of service networking? So it was a cold winter night <laughs> <laughs> in Boston back in 2008. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was snowing outside and my husband and I were getting ready to go out to dinner when we realized we were out of dog food. And we had this 100 pound yellow lab named Kobe who we kept very well fed. And my husband and I are both in technology and so we got thinking, wouldn't it be nice if there was just someone in our neighborhood who we could reach out to that could grab us this bag of dog food, maybe they're even at the store at this very second, and we should be able to connect with them. Now back in 2008, this is very early in mobile, the iPhone had just come out a few months earlier, no one was really utilizing location awareness yet in their applications, and then social was the other big technology trend that was just kind of breaking out of the college scene, becoming more mainstream. But as a technologist myself, I became really passionate about how do we mash up social location and mobile technologies to connect real people in the real world to get real things done. And I'd say in the last two years, it's become in real time. And so that's really the idea of where service networking was born. It was about utilizing those technologies to create a new network of people that are helping each other out to get tasks and jobs done. Conceptually, it sounds like a lot of the pieces you had originally thought of they're now starting to come into place, but mm -hmm. has the, the fundamental idea changed at all over those years? It's a great question. So not really. I mean, I started this back in 2008, TaskRabbit in 2008, um, before the words the sharing economy sure. even existed sure, yet, sure. right? That really became popular, I'd say in 2010, 2011, and now all these economies have evolved over the course of the last seven or eight years. But um, the, the core mission of the company of TaskRabbit, which is to revolutionize the way people work on a global scale, hasn't really changed that much from the very beginning. I'd say we've, we've evolved and we've certainly only scratched the surface with what we've delivered to date, but we still have that driving vision. You mentioned TaskRabbit's goal. Do you feel that it's to uh, provide work for, for people or to actually provide tools to help people work? Mm, another great question. Um, so a little bit of both, and here's why. So we took a, a space, an industry, services, um, and not just, not really professional services, but uh, sort of everyday household services, like house cleaning and handyman help and personal assistance, shopping deliveries. We took those types of services that were incredibly fragmented um, and really non-existent to the everyday user, everyday task or everyday supplier. Uh, they didn't have access to a lot of that demand, a lot of those jobs in the sort of world before TaskRabbit existed. And so it's certainly our job to create a platform where that demand is generated so that our tasker community, our suppliers can find work. But I think even more than that, it is about building a platform and tools for our taskers to build out their own businesses. And I'll, I'll, I'll clarify with an example. So I see TaskRabbit.com and TaskRabbit, the mobile application, as just one way for our tasker community to find work on the platform. Mm -hmm. We also have um, created some partnerships with external parties, like Amazon, for instance, where Amazon's utilizing the TaskRabbit API to send work from Amazon to our tasker community. So if you are ordering a flat screen TV, chances are you probably need it mounted. And if you can book and hire a tasker right in your neighborhood, right in your community at the time of purchase, then it's, it's shuttling work to that tasker in a different way as well. Interesting. What do you feel is the most significant issue that the peer economy is facing right now? And how do you think that issue is going to get resolved? Well, I mean, gosh, so f over the last seven or eight years, um, this uh, economy, the sharing economy, the peer economy, on-demand economy, all these different uh, nomenclatures have come up. And I think, to me, what's been apparent is that the consumer mindset has shifted so quickly and so dramatically. I mean, I remember in 2008, when the iPhone just came out, um, people thought it would be crazy to jump in a stranger's car mm -hmm. and take a ride with someone. People thought it would be crazy to have a neighbor or handyman come into their house and hang shelves. And so early days, there was a big trust barrier to entry. Now, as the consumer mindset has evolved and changed over the course of the last five, seven, eight years, 
trust has been able to be bridged utilizing technology and um, creating trust between users is sort of uh, a challenge that's of course always going to be there and still there, but it's not the main challenge anymore. I'd say in the last couple of years, uh, the con consumer mindset has shifted into how can I get something I need, whether it's transportation, goods, services, in real time. And that is a massive challenge from a technology standpoint, from an operational standpoint, from a matching standpoint. And so now it's all about these on-demand services and how can we deliver everything faster with the same quality or even better quality. So that's certainly another trend I've seen that's really come directly from the consumer mindset. So when I think ahead, what we're always thinking about at TaskRabbit is how is that consumer continuing to evolve? And how can we stay ahead of the curve there and continue to deliver what they need as their entire world is changing around them? Do you see the real-time component as primarily a technology issue? Um, no, it's definitely a technology issue, but it's certainly an operational issue as well. And it's, it's about allowing the tools and infrastructure for a tasker community like we have at TaskRabbit to not only make themselves available via the technology, but also to be able to stack their days and fill their days and understand where they are and what sort of work they want to get and defining their categories and work areas. And so there's a human component as well, which is, is, is part of the technology piece. So there's a bunch of different names for all of this on-demand economy, pure economy, share, sharing economy. Is there a particular phrase that you prefer to describe all of this? So I gotta say, uh, because I founded the company so early on before the word the sharing economy even existed, it's definitely been sort of a an interesting, um, sort of a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, uh, Fair with, enough, with right. all these new economies, right? It's like every year there's like a new economy right. to talk about. Um, one thing that I'm very cognizant of is I don't mind terms that describe the economy when it takes into consideration both sides of the marketplace. Mm. So I like the word the sharing economy because I feel like from the very beginning for me it was about neighbors connecting with neighbors and sharing resources, sharing skill sets, sharing time with each other and I like that. Um, the other economies like on-demand economy, I feel like that's so one-sided. It feels like it's speaking more to the consumer. The gig economy, it feels like that's speaking more to the tasker. And so at TaskRabbit, we're really focused on creating a healthy, sustainable, long-term marketplace for both sides of our community. So I really like words that describe both sides at the same time. Great, well, uh, last question for you. What people or projects are you following these days? Uh, there's so many interesting things happening, and I think particularly um, looking at how technology is influencing new industries that haven't really been disrupted or innovated against yet um, is something that's super interesting to me. So I'm thinking about a lot in healthcare, a lot in food tech a lot in personalization around health and food and how we can utilize technology and information just to make our lives better. Great. Well, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me.